So we got ourselves a EVGA GeForce RTX 2070 Super here, only this one is suffering from the dreaded one fan has decided to go 100% fan speed all the time. So I'm gonna see if I can't figure out what's happening here and or maybe fix it. This is a somewhat common problem that we've seen with some of the 20 series cards uh, from EVGA. And I'm not sure what's going on. So there's a couple things I wanna try to see if we can't get it sort of remedied. Maybe this will help you, I don't know. The new H7 series from NZXT offers tempered glass side panels, toolless panel removal for easy installation, front and top side 360 millimeter radio support, and integrated cable management bar for clean cable installs. To see the complete feature set and variations of the H7 available, including the H7 Flow, follow the link in the description below. So it's important to note, I already made sure the problem was obviously persisting here on my system because it was existing on someone else's system. So had I plugged it in here, and then everything was acting normal, one, I wouldn't be able to even start this video, so you'd never even know about it, because I wouldn't be able to reproduce the problem. But two, it rules out their tower or anything in their system, motherboard-wise or software-wise or whatever, completely out of the equation, which means the problem is contained entirely within the GPU itself. So when I, when I turn the system on, you can kind of hear this fan right here is going 100%. This fan is going a lot slower, So that one sounds like a buzzsaw. This one is going much, much slower. So that one, as you can see, I, I always test fan RPM with pitch, like sound. Let's see, that one even just turned off because these are zero dB fans. Remember, the part of the cooling solution that most AIBs have come up with and for like the last four generations of cards now, maybe three or four generations of cards, have included a zero dB mode, which means you know, when it's under low power and the idle speed is down and it's not under any sort of load, then it can just have the fans turn off. And the static, or the, the passive cooling capability of the heat array, the heat fin array and the heat pipes and the vapor chambers are, are so efficient that they would keep it cool in the 40s, sometimes as high as the 50s, low 50s temperature with nothing happening, no fans turning. And then once they're under a certain load or they exceed a certain temperature threshold, then the fans will turn on. This one right here is clearly not communicating correctly with the board. Now I have, I have a, a fear that I'm not gonna be able to fix this because if both were doing it, then that would tell me that there's maybe potentially a BIOS problem or a VBIOS or something with the card or firmware. That's the problem. But since this card is acting 100% normal and this card is doing its own thing, I have a sneaky suspicion that what's happening here is just like if you've ever had a, con a fan controlled header on a motherboard fail, Typically it fails in a couple of different ways. One, it just stops sending voltage if it's a three pin or PWM. Remember, four pin is also a three pin. It's just the fourth pin is a PWM signal. And so what'll happen is if it's, a, if it's a PWM product, then it will just kind of ignore the DC or the direct current pin and will pay attention to the PWM pin that will tell the, the motor how to speed up, slow down based on load, usually directly related to the CPU. I've had plenty of boards where I have tried to run a higher amp item, a DDC or D5 pump that had a, a, a four pin header on it and plug it into a header that wasn't designed to handle as many amps as that pump. And this goes back to the days of where you could only have like 0.2 amps on a header. Then what would happen is I would just lose all control. The control aspect of it broke and then the fan just defaults to 100%. But there's a couple things that we can do here. First and foremost, I'm gonna install EVGA's Precision X. Uh, or, or XOC, XPX1, PX1, that's what it is, it's too many acronyms. When you have an EVGA, and this is not an EVGA branded video, obviously EVGA would not be like, let's sponsor a broken GPU video, shall we? No, that's not exactly how sponsorship works, guys. Um, this is actually a video card that belongs to a friend. But built into their own PX1 software is a VBIOS check. And so what'll happen is it'll, it'll cross-reference the VBIOS that's on the board and all the subsystems including the actual VBIOS and the firmware. And then if there's a mismatch saying that you're older, it'll automatically update it. So I wanna start with a simple firmware update because nothing says that the firmware couldn't have somehow gotten corrupted in the sense that one fan is no longer communicating properly. Simple, easy fix that's free and doesn't require just disassembling the board. That's the other thing is disassembling the board um, would be an issue. Now it's gonna run. And it should immediately prompt us for a firmware update. I'm fairly certain this card is out of date. Or not. Or not at all. But that's okay because the way that we're gonna move about right now is we are going to find a BIOS for this card and we are going to flash it. That's kind of the, 
The first thing you always do, in my opinion, when you're doing, you're dealing with cards that have wonky behavior like this is you need to, to test it or, or flash the BIOS. So before I can download any, any firmware or anything, I had to see what our current one is. So our, if we download GPUs or Tech Power Up GPUZ and we look at our card, you can see we're on 90.04.86.00.bc, and that coincides with this BIOS right here with the 2070 Super 8 gigabyte XC Ultra. The date on that is October 3rd, 2019. Well, there's another XC Ultra here. It has a previous version, 625, and that's 90.04.76.00.fa. So I do want to reflash this BIOS over top of it. We are potentially um, in Brick City because once you go to flash a BIOS, if something happens while you're flashing that, and you don't have a fallback, which is the second BIOS, um, say the system loses power, I kick the plug or something, it turns off while it's flashing. If it's in the middle of writing to the EEPROM or erasing the EEPROM, then that's kind of bricked at that point. You, there are tricks you can do to get them back by using a second card, but this is now where you enter the whole try at your own risk thing. Now it's just gonna be NV flash space dash six space 2070 ROM dot ROM. Now it's gonna read the ROM file from the location of where NV flash is, so it'll be in the same folder. Oh, no, I forgot the, oh yeah, and that, dot exe I think. There we go. So what it's doing right now is it's actually disabling the driver because it can't do it when the driver's loaded. So display driver firmware, say yes, because we want to continue. Push Y, it's writing to the ROM right now. It's now rebooting the card. And we won't see a reboot is required for the, uh, the change to take effect. Nothing's gonna happen if it worked because of the fact that the ROM is only loaded when the system is initialized. So right now when we hit restart, and I'm actually gonna do a full shutdown because I think Shutdowns are a little better for this than restarts. I have a sneaky suspicion that fan is still gonna blast 100%. Okay, power on. Right to 100%. It even, it even started harder than this one. So I'm now suspecting that either the header is bad in some way where it's no longer controlling it, like properly controlling, it's just sending 100% PWM signal, or the fan might be somehow misinterpreting that as 100%, like the fan itself could have gone bad. The one thing I wanna try first is rolling back the driver, dot ROM. Gonna turn off the driver, which I could do first, by the way, but it does it automatically. Say yes to write to the firmware. I write the firmware on the adapter, and now we can just go ahead and do our restart, which I think will be in vain. I really do think this is gonna turn out to be more of a hardware problem. Same thing, nothing changed. All right, so let's go ahead and shut it down. And we're gonna have to open it up. So the way that the wiring works on this car is there's a single plug at the end of it. That's responsible for the lighting and the fans. So that's a fan going that way, and that's a fan going that way. And they have this kind of a, a, a harness that connects to it. What I have to do right now, because I don't want to take the cooler off if I don't have to, I'm gonna go ahead and take off these perimeter screws. I should be able to get off just the shroud around the fan, which will give me greater access to the Rather than trying to bend this tab up and work with these cables right here and then potentially damage something, I'm just gonna try and take the shroud off. Check that out. So all we did now is just remove the shroud. Oh, I lied. This cable right here goes to the LED. Both of these right here go to the fan. So now if my theory is correct that this is a controller problem, this fan should be going 100% now. There's three possible outcomes. This fan's gonna run 100%, that fan's gonna run 100%, and it's gonna be either because the header's bad, the fan is bad, or I just plugged them right back into exactly how they were. But I don't think that's the case because I had to flip it over to make it work and it was against the twist, so I'm fairly certain that I have switched it properly. Or they're both gonna run as expected. I did not expect That was not yeah. an outcome I had listed. I was, I was thinking this fan was gonna run at 100. Wait a minute. So fan one, 100%. That's correct. Fan one is supposed to be the, the GPU VRM. Fan two is supposed to be the rear one. So it should turn off. Huh. Fan two. Because what I could do now is I could turn it back off, switch the plugs, and if the fans switch, then that's all I did was put them back into the header that they were, but maybe the header was loose, or maybe it was being pinched in one of these metal 
plugs, because these are big, thick metal brackets, like these little tabs. Okay, so I wanna shut it down now, and I wanna switch the fan headers again, and I wanna see if fan one and two switch places. If they do, then we know that all I did was unplug them and plug them back into the same spot. So I'm gonna mark this one with silver on the wire and silver on the plug. And I wanna see now, if I switch these, does the fan header change reflect? Back to 100%. They're both doing it now. No, it's not. This one's gonna turn off right now. See, it's slow. It's the same behavior. That one's gonna turn off as soon as window starts. So that one's back to running 100%. See, there it goes. Were these plugs always backwards? It says it's at 47% doing 3,300 RPM. Which is 100%. Which is 100%. So let's switch them back. They should then be working fine, which means I can put the shroud back on and call it a day. Now that one's going 100%. Okay, so maybe something's wrong with the cable then. It's gotta be a cable thing. There it is. I think it's a broken wire. This is fun. I like this kind of stuff. There's a crazy bend, and that's because of the way it was hooked in there like that. It had to make that sharp bend. I think we got a broken wire in there. I think it's potentially a broken PWM wire. Because what do most PWM devices do when they don't see PWM? They go 100%. So I have a 2080 Super here, but it uses the exact same harness. Um, so you can see it right here. Again, this is, a, this is a Founders Edition PCB. That's why this is the same as what you would find on a Founders card. But look at this. You can see their crimp. Look at that. Look at where it's at. The crimp is right at the edge of the connector. Now, you see how that's bent straight? Oh, that, I guess that would be, that's the same as that one. I was like, why is that straight up? But I see it there. But you can see right there, it should not be moving, which shouldn't be an issue, but it doesn't mean that there wasn't some sort of damage at the time that that took place. What I would rather do then is just change this harness out and then ask an EVGA if they have any in their RMA, because like, I've, I've been to their, obviously in their um, location in Brea, where they do a lot of their testing and RMA or in-house, they've got a ton of spare parts like way back, like just random parts, like stuff like this. If it was a bad GPU, they would take the cooler off and they would keep the cooler, they would keep the fans, they would keep the RGB strip, they would keep the harnesses, all this stuff, because it all has repair value. So I'm just gonna swap out this harness now. So this should just work fine. Yeah, amazing what happens when the wires are fine. I wonder, oh, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> That's the loose wire, I just, I, it just came right out, right there. Now that was my first thought, was it had to be a broken wire. It just, it was broken right where it meets the crimp, which is typically where a wire will break. And look how, look how fine the gauge is on this wire. It's gonna be like a 24, 26 gauge wire. It's really, really tiny. But there you go, if that's the solution, one of the wires in here broke, just sitting there static, clamped down, not moving. It just probably has something to do with the constant heat cycling that it will experience having all the warm air going through, especially when it's in zero dB. When it's in zero dB mode, and this is why I never run my fan zero dB personally. I'm okay with them turning slowly at like, I mean, if, if I go in here and just set them to like 30% or whatever the minimum is, I think 37% or something like that, you'll never hear them, but you always keep some airflow going through there. Let's go 30%. You'll never hear that, but you will keep the cards components so much cooler than sitting there baking and potentially now causing that wire to somehow Expand, contract, expand, contract, expand, contract, and then break. So tap, that's how people wonder all the time, like, how do wires just go bad? Well, that's what they're doing. They're expanding and contracting under either temperature changes or voltage going through them or whatever, and then eventually it'll break. And so that happened here, and I'm glad we found the issue. Now we can give him back his card, all up and running. So to do it with your card, you would have to pop off this end piece, which I, I did, you know, it's just these, tabs on the bottom, tabs on the top, and they, they go like right there. My 2080 Super didn't even have one on it because I'd already taken it off and uh, put it back on and I thought this was kind of useless back there. But uh, that'll give you access to the wire and if you have a fan that's going 100%, you could, while it's running, kind of go in there maybe with something plastic or kind of wiggle it around and see if you can get the fan RPM to change. If you can, then you know you have a bad wire too. Not sure if EVJ ever found the solution to this, but that's what happened with this particular card. I don't know if that's widespread. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.